All right, guys, going to do a couple of, uh, well, one video, but I'm gonna, I've got a couple of tips on this one for the amateur DIY guy working on his 5, 6, or 7 Chevy in his garage, carport, out in the yard, in a bunker, whatever. Um, I don't ever really gear my videos when I, when I give a tip or a trick. It, it's not for a professional because those guys, they already know everything. They don't need to know this stuff. And I'm always on a budget, so I try to find the cheapest route I can. Anyway, what I'm going to cover today is a molded carpet set, um, and I'll give you a few tips and tricks. If you've never installed one on a 5, 6, or 7 Chevy, this will help you out. Um, they are not hard to do. They do take a little time. It's not like you pull it out of the box, throw it in, and you're done. There is a little bit more to it than that. Uh, but I can tell you one thing. If you have not done it, I would highly recommend to put some sound deadening stuff in your car. It doesn't have to be Dynamat. It can be anything. Uh, there's lots of brands on the market. Prices mild to wild. I am not sponsored by Dynamat. I had to buy all that, but uh, I actually did not have enough to finish everything, so I used uh, some strips of GT mat, which I got off eBay. It was a box of it, and it came with a roller. It was really inexpensive. But uh, anyway, so that stuff I highly recommend. It works against heat and sound. Now, when you buy a molded carpet set, what I ran into, my very first carpet set I bought in the early 90s for my very first 55 two-door post I built, um, I bought a two-piece carpet set. And when it came in, I don't remember what brand it was, when it came in, this whole center area where the bench seat would cover was open. There was no carpet there. It was like a back piece. It was two pieces, uh, the front section and the rear section. And this center, this was open. And back then, I couldn't afford to do Dynamat. Uh, or any sound deadening, so that's just bare floor right there. So that's not going to help much for, you know, sound or anything. Um, so after that, I learned to buy one-piece kits. Now, I don't really, this is just my preference. I prefer the cut pile like this. This is like what's in new model cars. It's cut pile. Uh, this is easier to vacuum, easier to blow out with an air gun. Uh, the loop pile carpets, uh, which would kind of be what's original, those to me, they're just kind of hard to clean. If you, you know, especially if you drive it a lot, you'll get stuff bound up inside them loops and it's just hard to get it out. You got to sit there and work that little uh, shop back to get it out of there. Um, of course, they have Daytona weave too, and uh, I can't afford that. I can tell you that right now. Anyway, what you're supposed to do is pull this out of the box and take it out and put it in the sun for a couple hours and let the sun heat it up. And I can tell you for a fact, because I've done it many times, if you have a black carpet set and you put it out in the sun in the middle of summer, when you go out there in a couple hours to get it, it's like a limp noodle in your hand. That didn't sound right. Anyway, I don't have that luxury because it's winter time and uh, it's been snowing and raining and it's nothing but cloudy outside, so <laughs> I can't put it outside. So anyway, I'll show you where I've started at in here. Now, I've pretty much got it where it's going to be. And... Uh, so I've started on this, this area right in here first. Now I had to end up using a heat gun uh, to get it to relax because it has all these wrinkles in it, you know, from being in the box. And it is hard to work out. Now on areas of this carpet underneath, there's areas of jute padding spray glued to it. So I like to try to use the heat gun underneath if I can, but if that jute's there, it ain't gonna do any good. Uh, it never really gets the carpet hot enough. But like up in these areas that don't have it, it heats up very well from the bottom, but you don't want to stay on it very long because it'll start melting it. Now you can use a heat gun on the top where the fibers are, but don't stay in one spot because you'll watch them shrink up. Uh, you got to kind of keep it moving and just, it's just going to take time. It's like 30 or 45 minutes for me on this area right here, uh, but it's turned out pretty nice. <clears throat> I've still got, uh, I've got a little hump here and I've got a hump here. So I'm going to sit there and heat these spots up pretty good and they'll they'll pretty much, what I'll do is I'll heat it up and then I'll put my hand on there and I'll hold it there until I feel it cool off and then I'll take my hand off and it's usually gone. So uh, those two will have to have some touch up. Now, to get to the main thing that a lot of guys will probably run into, when you put your carpet kit in, in a 5, 6, or 7 Chevy, you're supposed to have these little, I don't even know what these are called. I've heard them called many things. I call them top of rocker covers, wire channel covers. Anyway, when you screw these on, uh, basically, you know, your wires are under there, but they have this hellacious, like almost quarter inch drop in them right here. So that's a pretty good transition. So you'll notice when you put your carpet kit in, after it's, you know, heat cycled from the sun a few times in your car, you'll have a ditch right here. So 
uh, to remedy that, this is what I do. Uh, you know, the jute padding is glued up here, but it doesn't come all the way out to that channel lip. So I'll take carpet remnants that I cut off the side right here. I'll measure it out and cut it, and I'll spray glue that to the bottom of the carpet. And when you lay it in there, it lines up directly in that channel like that. So when you put it down, it's completely flat. You don't have your, you know, your hiccup in it. So, so far I've done this piece and I've done the piece along the side here uh, to fit this one. And then now I've got to work on this one back here where it doesn't go all the way. It lacks, you know, what is it? About two and a half inches probably. Uh, but anyway, I can show you right here. So you can already see if it shows up in the camera, this has a, like a kick up in it right here. That's how much further down that goes. It's kicking the carpet up. So I'm gonna cut more strips and get them all glued in here to level that out and it should be fine over time. Now, another tip I would give, this is common knowledge. I think it even says it in the instructions if you read that. Uh, put your bolts in your floorboards first for anything that's in the floor that you've got to cut out for. Uh, like in this case would be my original bench seat brackets. Uh, there's two bolts at the front, two bolts at the back on each side. Then you got your two bolts if you're still running your original accelerator pedal. Uh, if you do not know what size these are originally, these are 5 16 by 24 fine thread. The ones for the accelerator pedal are quarter by 20. Um, anyway, so you'll get those all cut out. Now, this is another tip I'll give. This is just me. Uh, you know, I use a little tent knife here. This is like a snap blade tent knife. A lot of guys that use do, do window tinting use these. The blades are super thin, so they are super sharp. Like, they cut really well. If you try to do a circle around your bolt hole, uh, a lot of times it'll get away from you, and you'll end up having a cut mark in your carpet. So what I do is I just cut a square out. Uh, it's just easier to manage as a square for me. Uh, a lot of guys are different, but that's just me. Um, anyway, I also cut squares out for the door seal plates, which I probably didn't need to do them that wide but everywhere a screw goes. Uh, I gave it enough room so as when I'm putting the screw in, the threads don't catch the edge of it and you know pull the carpet and twist it or something. But uh, anyway, it's another tip I'll give. If you are in metalwork stage on your 5, 6, or 7 Chevy, you know, you're doing metalwork, rust repair, and all that stuff, patch panels, I would go ahead and just weld up those holes in the rockers. If you didn't replace them with new ones, uh, I would weld up the old ones because sometimes they'll be stripped out and if you're replacing your door seal plates with new ones, sometimes the screw holes don't line up. So keep that in mind. Um, if you, you know, weld them up, you know, sometimes they're not put in there, the factory didn't put them in there exactly perfect. Uh, you can place them exactly where you want them and then drill your own holes. Sometimes, you know, if you got to go back and drill a hole where an existing hole was, it might be right on the edge of the old one and then it just makes a mess in the end. But, uh, Anyway, so I would recommend welding them up and drilling new ones. Now, when you buy your new door sill plates, I don't ever use the same sill plate side to side. I will use, like this one I mocked up, drill the holes for this one, and then I'll mark on it left. Then I'll go get the other one and I'll mock it up for the other side. Uh, that way, just in case one of them holes are off on the other one, it won't mess you up. But they come with this blue, like a vinyl tape on them. It's just protection for from scuffing for shipping and stuff always leave that on there until the end. Um, that way, you know, like in my case, I'm still working on my car, I'm climbing in and out of it. I'll leave that protection coating on there. And that way, you know, if you string an extension cord across it or something, it won't scuff up your shiny new aluminum. And also, you know, climbing in and out, your boot or your shoe might hit it. Uh, but anyway, that's just me. But anyway, guys, um, oh, I will say, I, I have seen guys videos where they heat up, you know, a piece of steel bar or something and melt through that. That's the stinkingest, nastiest mess I've ever seen. Uh, you can do that as well. Uh, like an alignment tool, you can heat up the end of it and just poke it through where the holes are for your bolts or whatever. I don't do that, I just got squares. But Anyway, just me. But those uh, cutoffs from the carpet can be used uh, on the cheap because they're pretty much the same thickness as the jute that's on that carpet set there. Anyway, hope it helps, and I'm going to get back to work. <laughs>